before we start this video, a large thank you to Vitkovashi, Philip, Carl, Andy, and San for their support on Patreon. I hope you guys enjoy the video. And an immense thank you to Halo Burner for their continued support of the channel this month on Patreon. It is greatly appreciated, my friend, and I hope you enjoy the video. Hello, everybody. I want to start off with a small disclaimer before we start this video. So the stuff I usually publish on this channel is typically tested rigorously beforehand, like weeks or months in advance. And any errors or bugs that come up are usually because I just failed to copy my own architecture to the T or I just made a silly mistake. I say this because this next system I'm about to cover in Nephilim is a prototype system and it hasn't been around for all that long and I haven't tested it as extensively as I've tested things I've posted here in the past. I don't typically like to make things on videos like this unless I'm absolutely sure I'm confident in everything that I'm doing. What I'm about to show you is how to set up lighting with your additive scenes using pro volumes. It does work in Nephilim. I will say a couple things ahead of time though. At the time of this video, I don't have a lot of experience in pro volumes as it's kind of new. On top of that, there have been numerous bugs and small little issues with it that I still experience today in Nephilim. So I say all this to say that if you conclude this video and something happens, post in the comments and I can try to help you. But more importantly, if you see me making a mistake in this video and how I'm setting things up, please correct me and I will make a video and adjust accordingly. The following is the information on how to set up pro volumes and additive scenes, and I've gotten this from asking Unity engineers and people who have set it up themselves. But as I said before, I've only just recently done this in Nephilim, and it has not been tested extensively, and if there is a better way and you know of it, please correct me. I'm choosing to publish this workflow because it was requested by a few of my patrons. And honestly, I get why, because setting up pro volumes with additive scenes can be kind of frustrating. The documentation leaves a lot to be desired. Anyway, let's start. All right, hello guys. So the first thing we want to do is go over into our world scene here and drag in all of your additive scenes. Now, what I typically do is, is I bake them all together in the world scene like so. Go to your adaptive pro volumes and you could use global, but I find the bake times are very, very long with that and kind of unnecessary. So what you want to do is actually match it to the dimensions of your scene. So you could generate the lighting just like it is now but it will take a lot longer than if you were just modified this a little bit. So go to your pro volumes, change it from global to local, and then you can basically click fit to all scenes here, and it will go to the borders of all of your scene where it detects some kind of geo. Uh, and that will render a lot quicker, uh, bake a lot quicker, my bad. But don't bake that right now because we actually have to do something else first since we're dealing with, again, additive scenes and a world scene you basically need to make sure you're doing this as a set. And you can create a thing called a baking set. We'll get to that in a moment. A baking set is basically going to just encompass all the scenes you're gonna have that are will be loaded in your world at any time. So we have obviously area zero, one, two, three, four, five, and our world scenes. Let's go to adaptive pro volumes. You can see a single scene, change that to baking set. And now it will have created one for you. Mine's called scene world 01 baking set. You can see here. Just click on that and then we're gonna change the stuff in the inspector on adaptive pro volumes and just add all the scenes here uh, to the scenes in baking set. Now, you can also do a thing here called uh, duration or virtual offset. Basically the probes, I'm not gonna waste your time explaining it too deeply, but they make mistakes. And I find that if you toggle the second one here, virtual offset, it does increase your bake time, but it makes it so the probes are more accurate and won't kind of like cause weird lighting artifacts. If you find it does just on ticket or play around the settings, but here's what I use in Nephilim. Uh, the search distance is 0.2. The geo bias is going to be 0.01. And I think everything else I leave the same. And then I do a bake and it should work. So we also have to go down here now to our world scene sub manager and do something. Now, when I was doing this with additive scenes, there was a bug uh, and basically loading the additive scenes in your world did not actually load in the light probes, even though they were baked. So we're gonna say using Unity Engine rendering, and we're gonna make a header for the probe volume set. And what we're going to do is serialize the field and then put this set here. So we're gonna make a variable for probe volume baking set, call it bake set. That's just the baking set that we just made. And what we need to do is basically every time we load an area, uh, if we're the, if this is the local player loading into this area, we have to set the baking set and the active scene, um, the active lighting scene. And more on that in a second, let's just make the function for that. So we're gonna call that in add player to new location, make a private uh, code routine here. So I enumerator, wait, then set active scene. 
And then we're going to make this require the world scene location, the area, and we're basically going to get a scene from that. We need to make a function to get the scene from that. So bool has scene is equal to false. And while we don't have scene, we're going to do something. Well, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to basically wait for the scene uh, to finish loading and then get it. And then we're going to use the world scene location to determine what scene we're actually in. And then we're going to assign the bake set and the lighting in the scene. So let's get rid of the pseudo code. Uh, and then we're just going to basically do a for loop here. And we're going to do a for loop and search our loaded scenes in the world scene manager dot instance dot loaded scenes dot count. And we're going to use a function that we don't have yet. So we're just going to pretend we have it. Oh, this is giving me an error. One second. It's because I'm not using systems dot collections. Let's go up and paste this here. Now it will stop complaining. All right, let's go back down to the code routine. And after we have this here, we're going to iterate through all these like I just said before. And what we want to do is figure out which scene in the loaded scenes matches the area that we're passing. So we're going to say if world scene manager dot instance dot loaded scenes I dot name is equal to area, but we can't do that, right? Because this is a an enumerator, but we could just say world scene manager dot instance dot get scene ID from world scene location. And we're going to make a function to do that in a bit. And we pass the area, but that doesn't exist for now, but let's pretend it does. So we get the scene that way. We're going to say has scene is equal to true. And then we are going to say right below that probe adjustment volume dot instance as in the probing your scene, or sorry, probe reference volume dot instance dot set active scene. And we're going to pass world scene manager dot instance dot loaded scenes I. And then right below that, we are also going to call probe reference volume dot instance dot set bake active baking set and pass the set. Now, as to why we need to do this, honestly, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, I know that if you don't do it, the, even though you've baked probes in the scene, they will not show up in your new loaded additive scene when you load them in your world. If someone is a lighting wizard or an adaptive probe volume wizard, and you want to fill me in the comments as to why this is the case, that'd be great. I have asked before, but I haven't really received an answer. So set the baking set. When we add player to a new location, we're going to say if the player is an owner, start a coroutine, wait, and then set the active scene. We pass the area just like so. And then we can save that. Now let's go and create this function that doesn't exist yet. So copy that, go over to the world scene manager down here. And then I can make that anywhere really but I'm probably going to put it at the bottom. And what we're going to do is basically we're going to utilize the area as in the world scene location variable. And we're going to get a scene ID depending on the area that matches it. So we can put here scene IDs and you can make a public void because we're going to need to call that from that other location on the world sub scene manager, get scene ID from world scene location. And we pass world scene location and call this area. And then we're going to do a switch statement and we're going to make a local variable for a string called scene ID. We're going to initialize it at basically nothing, uh, just the empty quotations. And then at the end, we're going to return the scene ID, but it should never make it to the end. And if it does, you have a problem because you should always be getting a valid scene here. So area 01, obviously that will match up with the variable here for area 01. So we can just pass the variable, which will give us the string that we have here. And it's always consistent. So we can say return and then we pass area 01 sub area 00. zero. And then we just do the same thing for area 01 sub area one changes zero to one. If you're copying and pasting it, do the same thing for two, change it to two, do the same thing for three, change it to three, and then finally four and five, same thing. Okay, cool. Now we can save that and it should work, right? Right. But there might be a problem. And I'm going to show you a potential problem that is really frustrating because there's no answer to what it might be. And this is one of the reasons why I don't like adaptive pro volumes. But first, drag in your bake set. And again, it's not that I don't like it. It's just that sometimes it feels um, incomplete or uh, not intuitive. And it will be improved on, I'm sure. Go into each of your individual scenes, load them individually, and make sure you set the lighting settings asset to whatever your world lighting settings are. So you want to have these consistent. Or maybe for some reason you don't. I don't know. But uh, generally speaking, you want these consistent. So I'm going to go into each of these and say world lighting settings, like so. And do the same thing over and over again, and then go to four and five. 
And then after that's done, we want to make sure our probe volumes are baked correctly and we want to make sure our scenes baked correctly. So I'm going to go back uh, into my scene in a minute and just make sure that's all set up. So you also want to drag out all of the little headers here from under one of these headers. So floors and all that should go into sublocation four and it should be a bunch of game objects. Why is that? Well, I'm told that the way Unity loads scenes, uh, basically if you have one single hierarchy, it's a lot more work. But if you have multiple individual hierarchies, it basically is less likely to cause a form of stutter or like, you know, some CPU bottleneck. So having all these out like this is the ideal way to go. You also don't want to have, if you can avoid it, a lot of awake calls and start calls on your additive scenes because that will also create a bottleneck. And if you do have a lot, what you want to do is enable some of these game objects over time using a coroutine when the scene loads. So have them defaultly start disabled and then enable them over time over a few frames. Uh, and again, you can do this however you want to do it, but you don't want to enable them all simultaneously with a lot of start and await calls. Um, you'll get a frame stutter. So if I go in the game here, you can see my character actually is not shaded in. Uh, and you, that means our pro volumes actually are not baked. And I'm going to show you what happened. Uh, I didn't record it. It's very easy to miss because it's just a random small inspector bug. If I bake this, it says sphere cast is not valid. And you're thinking, well, that's not a lot of information. If I click that, nothing happens. But what it is, and it doesn't tell you, is that there's some game object in your scene that Unity doesn't like. So that's why it's good to have things in hierarchies because now I'm going I'm to dis disable these hierarchies until I find it. And if I do all of these here and go back up and bake, you can see that if I click this, it's actually going to bake. So now we can narrow it down and we know that the problem game object is in one of these hierarchies. And I'm not going to waste your time because I know what it is now after testing it. Uh, it's in the props hierarchy. So if I go back and click this again, turn it on, you can see I get an error. But if I were to enable everything and disable props, this the particular prop in there, it actually doesn't uh, break anymore. So if I remove the problem object, it bakes, and you can see my character is shaded, and now it is working as intended. Uh, this is a problem that you will likely encounter. And if you do, you basically, this is why separating your game objects often in those separate stacks is very important uh, or very helpful. Unfortunately, Adaptive Pro Volumes doesn't give you a lot more information than that. I wish it did. You might also encounter a bug where in your scene view, or sorry, in your, in, in your inspector, when you're running the game in Unity Engine, as you move through the scene, the lighting will appear broken. But if you build the game, the lighting will not be broken. This is again a bug with Adaptive Pro Volumes. At the time of this video, it is still present on both of these projects. Um, so if it's not for you, maybe it is a Unity version specific thing or an Adaptive Pro Volume specific thing. But I'm still encountering it. So if you do see lighting artifacts, please do a build of your game first and then try it out. And if for some reason you still see lighting artifacts, leave a comment below and I'll do my best to search what's happening. And if there is a fix to it, I'll post the fix as a pinned comment under a non-listed video on this video. So again, one more time. If you guys encounter any bugs with this, please let me know. And if I have any updates to this, instead of making a new episode, I'll make a an unlisted episode. I'll call it bug fixes for this episode. And I will put it in a pinned comment under this video, okay? Because Adaptive Pro Volumes, at the time of making this video, I have encountered a few really weird bugs and a few really weird niche cases where I found next to no information and I've had to kind of sort it out myself. So if anything of that comes up and a lot of you are experiencing it, I will make uh, and add a video onto this one. Now, in the next video, because I've been asked like every week for the last month, I'm gonna cover slope sliding. That will make the character slip off of slippery surfaces, including players' heads. You'll notice in Elden Ring, sometimes if you jump on things, you just dramatically slide down very fast. Uh, beyond that, I'm gonna cover weapon upgrading and character save profile pictures, destructible and breakable objects. Finally, then client prediction. Uh, and if you guys want anything else after that, please let me know. I know a gentleman posted a list in my Discord. I have pinned it. But those are the next few topics I am going to hammer out. And if there is a follow-up on this video that I need to make, I will post that in the same week. Like I said, I'll make an announcement. You can check back in the Discord. It will be posted as a pinned comment under this video. Now, at this point, I'm ranting. So thank you very much for joining me this weekend, guys. I hope you did learn something. I hope the video was helpful. Uh, a genuine thank you to my patrons. It is actually because of each and every one of you that the series is able to continue and exist at all. So you have my sincerest gratitude. Thank you to the people who take the time to like, comment on these videos, tell their friends, and tell their people about the series. It does actually help so much. I hope you guys have a very great weekend, and I will see you next week.